All right. Mike Mercer here today, tying some flies with you guys. Thanks for, thanks for checking in. Um, I'm going to start today tying a, a kind of an old favorite, a fly called a Psycho Prince. And interestingly, Psycho Prince, I came up with it as a small attractor nymph, um, but not just a pure attractor nymph. When I, when I, when I tied it, I wanted to, to incorporate some of the things that I found in the natural stream insects all the time. Things like uh, a dark camouflaged uh, dorsal carapace and a light colored belly. Um, things like that you see a lot that if you notice, if you, if you dive or if you, if you snork a little, you'll see that what trout eat are very uh, rarely obvious and bright and they don't stand out because they're trying to survive a trout. And so they tend to be more uh, camouflaged if you look from the top where a trout's looking. Um, so I try to incorporate that into the design of a lot of my flies, including the Psycho Prince. And of course the Psycho Prince is known as kind of a bright flashy fly, but really in truth, it's about half bright and flashy and half pretty subtle as well. And interestingly, I, um, I, I tied it as a trout fly. My friend John Deeds started using it for steelhead in our local Trinity River. And really the, its identity has become more of a steelhead fly than anything. Great Lakes people, the anglers there use it a lot. We use it a lot out here for, uh, for, for steelhead as much as we do trout. Anyway, when I, when I decided to come up with this fly, I wasn't really trying to imitate any specific insect like I often do. Really, I was trying to just to come up with a pattern um, that I liked that, that had the features that I like a lot in, in a lot of nymphs. And I've always been a huge fan of the, just the old pr Prince nymph. I'm just, if, if you put a gun to my head and I had to choose one nymph to fish, um, amazingly, it probably would not be one of my own. It would be a prince nymph, a gold bead prince nymph. The fly is just so amazing. And, and although I do use my own most of the time, um, there's, it's still amazing how often I do pull out a, a gold bead prince, whether it be for trout or steelhead or, or whatever. It's just a great, uh, great all around attractor nymph. And so one thing I do is I use the same split biot tails as, the, as, as used on the, on the, um, on the prince. Um, and I tied this, this Psycho Prince, I tie it in several different colors. Um, and so I do sometimes I'll vary the, the, the tail and the, the wing colors just a little bit. Um, on this pattern, which is the particular one, which is an orange, I use a dark brown tail and then amber wings. Um, and so I use that dark brown bias, so I'll, I'll tie them in. And sometimes you'll see people will wait and tie the tails in after they start the body, like the dug body, or uh, in this case, the, the turkey tail carapace I use over the back. The only problem, the reason I don't do that is just because sometimes the tails will split too widely. And if you, if you look, I, my, a lot of my tying is based on what does a fish see when he's in the water. And often when you, when you observe, in this case, maybe a little stonefly nymph in the water or, or larger mayflies, their tails aren't always widely split. When they're swimming around, often they're together. And so I tie them back like this first because they will come together pretty easily, but they'll keep split, it's like a tension spring. They'll keep split, but under water pressure, they will come together and there's movement there. If you split them too widely, they're just locked in this wide position, which isn't really natural. Um, not that attractor nymphs are always um, you know, naturally inclined, but anyway, that's kind of my thinking on that. So awful lot of nymphs, I have very um, defined ribbing. I'm a big fan of, of using flashaboo for rib on a lot of flies, but this one, I didn't want anything that flashy really. I already had a, I already have a, a, a new, a flashy abdomen I'm gonna use. So you can use too much flies. I didn't want flash on flash. So I just use a, a small copper rib um, you, I like the, the ultra fine wire, the ultra wire. And then, and again, for sizes, the, the, the psycho that I usually use, which are 12s, 14s, 16s, um, for the most part, I use the small ultra wire in the, in a copper color. So I've got the, the, the wire stuck at the back, ready to go. Um, next I'll use uh, turkey tail fiber. And if you look at the turkey tail, you'll notice that it's quite variegated. There's a lot of spots and speckles and I love that over a lot of synthetics because most things in nature are not homogenous in color. They're not all brown or all white, or um, most of them are camouflaged, spotted, speckled. And the turkey tail fibers are, are super cool for that. Just like perfect, it's something from nature that I use to imitate na nature. And so I'll take 
and prepare a little strip. It's probably going to be, you know, if the, you've noticed there's little fibers that each that the tar turkey tail is made up of, and there's probably about a dozen strands in a size 14 like this that I use in, in a piece of turkey tail. And to keep the, the body fairly um, without a lot of bumps and lumps, I'll start by tying this turkey tail up towards the head. Always leave some room behind the, the, the bead, but I'll tie it up front and tie back over it. You'll notice that there's a shiny side and a dull side. The dull side's a little darker. That's what I want over the top of the fly. So I'll tie this in shiny side up and I can start up high, just wrap back, trying to keep it right on top of the hook so it kind of folds on both sides of the hook shank until I make it back to the tail. And then I've got the carapace. We're gonna pull that over as a carapace. Then I do maybe one of the more distinctive parts of the of the fly, which is actually the, the dubbed abdomen. I use orange ice dub. And I don't use a lot of ice dub, but when I do, I, I always find it's good. I will tie, I, when I tie my missing link, we'll use that, a little bit of ice dub for there. And a few nymphs I, I tie, I'll use it. I find sparingly, it does work very, very well. Um, so I'll tie a little bit of orange in. And again, remember, when when a, an insect lets go of the bottom and a little too fat there and and starts just drifting with the current, what a trout sees is bright dark, bright dark, bright dark as this nymph tumbles. So, whoops. So a lot of times I really do like having a dark carapace in a in a bright bottom because when this fly tumbles, it's going to give that impression of a real insect. The, and the fish is going to see that dark and light contrast. And fish love contrast. Um, I've found that out over the years. They just really, it's like a trigger to them. They see that contrast as a fly tumbles. And they, and they just, there's something about that that appears real to them. And they really like it. So I've dubbed the, the abdomen. It's most of the shank length. And I have a slight taper to it. And I'm going to bring the turkey carapace over the top. Tie it down, I keep it right on top of the hook shank. Little thread base. And then bring the, the rib forward. And this, of course, is going to give me your, us our, um, our rib. And I really think ribs are, are one of those triggers that a fish keys in on. I've just noticed that on, on both on nymphs and dries and mergers, Again, I do use flashaboo a lot for rib, and I think it, it imitates, it, it well imitates what a fish is used to seeing. And they like that. It could be trapped air bubbles it represents. It's hard to know for sure. Can't get in a fish's mind, but I can kind of by trial and error kind of figure out what, what works and what doesn't. Um, so I'm now going to use just a little more dubbing in front of this, a little more of the same orange dubbing, just like a single band. Behind that, and I'm going to again use goose biots. This time, instead of dark brown, I'm going to use, uh, I call it amber. It's like a golden color. Get a couple of those guys. Again, so the, the, the name of the fly is the Psycho Princess. It is based on a prince nymph, um, the same knit wing and tail styles. Take a pair and match them up. And I like to tie this so that they splay outward. There's a natural curvature to the goose biots. And I like to them so that they kind of splay off for the sides. And I'll make these usually slightly longer than the body itself. Um, so I've got to pinch them in place. And hopefully the thread doesn't break like that. <laughs> um, as I tie them in, I don't want them straight back over the top. Sometimes you'll see prince nymphs that are tied that so that the, the, the biots are kind of on this on right on top of the hook and I don't really want that I want them more to the sides a little bit and splayed out again a lot of what I'm doing when I'm tying is trying to create material motion because fish are used to seeing insects that move a lot of the movement is pretty minuscule and microscopic but if it doesn't move at all I mean granted in fast water they're going to eat sticks and stuff and so you can get away with that but um, in a perfect world, we're hoping to have a little bit of motion here. And again, a fish's eye 
is used to seeing that, is seeing a little bit of emotion like that. So anything we can do, like kicking the biots out so that they're affected by um, uh, by the uh, the current is a good thing. Now I'm going to use another kind of super bright material here. This is called light bright, and this is just a, a multi-stranded material. It's kind of like having a lot of extremely tiny flashy blue fibers um, together. And it just, it looks kind of unkept, which is fine. But I'm going to take a pretty good little hank of it and tie it in. Pull it back to the length I want. And then just simply clip that. It's almost like a wing case. And that's exactly what I tied it for, is to imitate a, an, a, an emerging wing case. Um, and typically speaking, that really, there's a lot of gas into that wing case, so it releases a lot of bright air refracted bubbles, and it's something a fish, again, I think keys on. It's a trigger. Um, they see that, and they'll come to it. And then finally, finish the fly. We're going to use just a, a little bit more ice dub, and the ice dub here is going to be a much darker color. Again, going with a dark light contrast. This is called um, Ice Dub Brown, UV Brown. And the UV part of it's really cool. It just has, it has a, almost like a little Christmas tinsel or something. When you turn it, it just little glints of light pick up. And it's funny, I started with this color, this UV Brown, and I use it for so many flies. It just seems to be a great color that fish really respond to. So I use, you know, certainly a number of the Ice Dubs, but the... Uh, the uh, UV brown is a, a real go-to for me. So I just have a little collar up front of that. A little whip finish. A few stray hairs. A little stray hairs I don't mind. So again, it kind of, a lot of bugs underwater are messy. And so a few stray hairs can really actually add some movement. But that's the, that's the Prince Nymph, the Psycho Prince. And you notice everything from the split tails to the, the dark carapace on top and the bright underbody, the little wing case on top. Um, again, it's a lot of little triggers built in, the, the outrigger wings. And again, the contrast between the dark head and the orange abdomen of the body. So a lot going on in this little fly. It's not just a, just a flashy little nothing fly. There's a lot of thought that actually went into it. And with a lot of my flies, a lot of the first versions are nothing special. I go out and I'm fishing with high hopes and, and they, they, they don't do well. And so I just come back and tinker and tinker and tinker. And, um, and with this fly, the, the, what I started with was basically the dark carapace and the bright belly. That was my, my, my first you know, thoughts of what I wanted to achieve with the fly. And then everything else kind of came after that, just slowly but surely, um, trial and error, until I got what I thought was the refined product. And that's it.